it's Mark. It's the Liberty Bell, which means I'm in what city? Anyone? Anyone? Philadelphia. I'm in Philadelphia because there's, there's a national LGBT media journalist convening here. And by that I mean it's an invitation-only event where the leading journalists in, in, in the country are together to learn about issues like immigration and aging and transgendered issues so that they can better report on them. Well, myfabulousdisease.com has been invited to this event, so clearly I have arrived. But I want to know, where's HIV on the agenda? And what do they think about HIV's coverage in the media today? And am I just whining because I'd like to see it more in the news? Let's find out about that because there's some important people, very interesting, that have a lot to say about it. It's sponsored, by the way, by the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association, and it's funded by the Haas Foundation, and kudos to the Bolerico Project for helping put it on. Join me. We all have the same condition. It's called life. I'm living mine as a gay man and an addict in recovery who's dealing with aging and being a friend and finding happiness and staying healthy and having fun and enjoying laughter, all while living with HIV for more than 25 years. I'm Mark S. King. And this is my fabulous disease. At Comcast headquarters the night before our meeting, I joined leading editors, writers, and bloggers from around the country. I was honored to be included. Well, I'm excited to see everyone coming to Philly. Uh, it'll be nice to watch as old friends reconnect and some of the newer folks that are just bursting onto the scene actually get to meet some of the folks that have been at this for a while. Wait a second. Did he just call me an amateur, a newcomer, a pipsqueak? This is one of our most diverse groups we've ever had. So we are literally talking about not just your A and B group bloggers, but we've really brought in some smaller folks. I'm not on the A list, the, the B? I'm not on the B list? Possibly by lifting them up and putting them on the same level with some of these people that would normally be considered the A grade. Well now, look who's gonna get some attention and get some links and hopefully get some other voices out there. That sounds very nice, but I'd really just like to go back to my room. Well, I pulled myself together and actually had a great dinner with new friends. Our host, Comcast, had a cute guy tell us how totally gay Comcast is. And then he showed a montage telling us how totally gay television is. We knew. Then, two iconic gay leaders made remarks. Lifelong gay political activist David Mixner and this man, Harvey Milk contemporary and AIDS quilt founder Cleve Jones. David Mixner believes that more people coming out as HIV positive increases visibility and reduces stigma. Where people who are serial converting are, are going in the closet. Yeah. They're going quietly to their doctor. And so if you don't know of someone who has HIV, you don't really think of it as an issue. We, it became an issue because we all knew people who were dying. Yeah. And so I was at a dinner party the other night. I knew two people who had come to me for help after they Sarah converted. Everybody at the dinner party was talking about they didn't know anybody who had HIV. Two people of their friends were sitting right at that table. So as long as we pass judgment, as long as we make people feel ashamed of their status or stupid for getting it now, we're going to have this problem. Our program began the next morning, and this is a room of LGBT media. It looks like Mission Command is about to launch a big gay rocket somewhere, or we're plotting to invade Heterolandia. The first presentation was on immigration, and right away, HIV presented itself in the story of Bambi, a Latino transgendered woman who was abused while in immigration detention and stigmatized for being HIV positive. All of the transgendered presenters showed nothing but courage in response to these challenges. Because, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to get pity from people, right? Because um, in the face of adversity, we are a community that is very strong and that we have overcome many challenges, and that's, I'm an example of that. Transgender people are already marginalized on the basis of their identity. People want to keep their distance uh, from us because of, just because of who we are. Uh, the exact same thing uh, often affects people uh, who are living with HIV, and so when there's an intersection uh, of those two of those two things in a person's life, uh, 
there's a lot to overcome there. And, and it's our job as community to overcome that, to close that distance, uh, to pull people in from the margins into the middle of community. Even though HIV was not one of the official topics of the day, it kept creeping into presentations on labor, aging, transgenders, and international issues. And I continued to think about HIV apathy and the role of LGBT media. Should they simply reflect our own waning interest in the topic? Or do they have a responsibility to make HIV visible to their audience? I started talking to people, and their answers were thoughtful and extremely personal. I think one of the questions is, you know, is, is the coverage that HIV is getting enough, considering the fact that it is still you know, a really big problem for the community? Um, and I think that's a fair question to ask. And I think that sometimes I feel like we're not doing enough, um, but then sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough about you know, a lot of other issues as well. You can't expect an editor or writer to have ESP. You gotta be pushing your issue, whether it's HIV, whether it's gay rights, whether it's trans issues. You have to push the issues. It's up to the activists. I think it's not a, a maliciousness or a lack of interest. It's just journalists are overwhelmed, right, with so many different beats now because there are so few, so many fewer of us. There's so much information out there. People try to get their voice out there and get as much traffic as possible. And so you get this sort of dunning down of information. So you have a lot of Shortest man, you have a lot of just like pop culture things, and I'm certain because of that because I write about pop, pop culture more than anything else. But the sacrifice of that is you're getting more traffic, but you're sacrificing the coverage of HIV, AIDS, and topics that are more important. Even though I'm HIV negative, I'm very interested in m learning more about what it means to be HIV positive. Uh, it, impa it impacts everything that I do, uh, whether it's one of my friends who's become positive, whether it's me who might become positive, whether it's understanding the generations I came from. That information helps and it matters. I've been positive for 25 years and I'm healthy and it's manageable and it's also certainly had its pitfalls. So it's not like you just take these pills and it's a walk in the park. It's a constant juggling act. We've largely become a sanitized movement uh, that's afraid to engage with sex honestly. So we have our own columnist who does his weekly thing talking about PrEP. He is on PrEP, so he's kind of our, our case study to tell me what that's like, uh, to tell our readers what that's like from his point of view as he goes through that. I think these days you can actually read a slight increase of these sorts of stories of uh, HIV negative men uh, hooking up and negotiating uh, their experience with HIV positive men. When people start telling their stories honestly, accurately, that's how we change minds, that's how we make a difference. My name's Kevin. Um, not only a writer, um, an out proud gay man uh, who recently had unprotected sex after a drunken encounter with a hot marine. I think people don't talk about it because it's a really a challenge to not lose tier one messaging about safe sex and talk about PrEP and talk about that if you have no viral load that your rate of transmitting the disease have come way down. After doing that, I went to the doctor once I got back into town. Uh, the doctor gave me, as preventive measure, gave me Truvada, which is TEP, post-exposure post, um, prophylactic. And you know, because of that, I'm negative today. I think that that's something we probably do need to be writing more about, not just Metro Weekly, but everybody. And my, my concern with it would be is we're missing a really big story about the medicalization of um, gay male sexuality. I think that the way that you deliver the medicine, sort of, is to make it palatable and to make it interesting and quote unquote sexy. And the way you do that is by, is by giving it a face. By being educated and going to a doctor and talking op openly and honestly about the health risks, that I was able to like, mitigate any risk there was. On the next block on the right side, you got the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. As some of us took a tour of Philadelphia the next morning, everything there is named Franklin, by the way, I came to a few conclusions. No one is covering HIV to my satisfaction, but LGBT media is better at it. A lot of those working in LGBT media are every bit an activist as I am. With new tools like blogs and social media, it's easier to make your own news and tell your own story. And making ourselves visible as people with HIV is the best way to combat stigma and apathy. Come out, come out wherever you are. 
thanks a lot for watching, and as always, please be well. If you look to your right side, you'll see Mark from MyFamousDisease.com. He wants to be a historical monument, but that'll never happen.